Here at the historic Daniel Boone home, we like to teach the value of fire. Can you think of a reason for having a fire other than for warmth? Uh, it is a cool day today, and so I'm enjoying the warmth of the fire, but here at the historic Daniel Boone home, uh, we have many other uses of fire, uh, historic uses, things you may not have thought about uh, using a fire for today. For instance, uh, we like to make maple sugar, which comes from the sap in maple trees. Uh, we go ahead and take that sap and put it in large kettles over a fire and boil it down to make sugar, which was the only way you could get sugar on the frontier. So if you like sugar, that was a good reason to have a fire. Another thing is candles. We like to have candles in the evenings. Uh, none of our buildings have electricity, so if you needed to get up for any reason at night, you would need to have light to either read by, walk by, to uh, go out into the, the chicken coop and see what's going on out there. Uh, so fire was important for safety and protection and uh, to be able to uh, walk carefully through the dark. Other reasons for fire would be for cooking and for cleaning. But all of these things you could not get using a lighter or a match. Instead, you had to use good old flint and steel. This here steel would be uh, made by a blacksmith, and it's strong, uh, and it is used to create friction when it hits against this piece of stone called flint. Now, you can't just rub them together as such and get a spark, but if you were to knock them together over and over again, you'll see that there'll be little bits of sparks that form. And those sparks are really pieces of the steel that are being shaved off. That's why it's a little more shiny on the end here. Now a spark like that isn't enough to create a fire like the one I've had going. Uh, instead, you would need to uh, take and hold on to that spark by using a piece of what we call char cloth. You would place that piece of cloth on top of your piece of flint taking your steel and knocking against the, the piece of flint until your little spark catcher, that char cloth, ends up holding it long enough so that you can transfer it to a larger piece of fuel. So speaking of fuel, there's really three things that fire needs. It needs heat, it needs fuel, and it needs oxygen. So when I strike this and it then catches onto the piece okay so here I've just used some friction which was some heat to catch onto a small piece of fuel I then transfer this piece of fuel to a larger piece of fuel which is a nest that I've made out of rope I place it inside, and then we have oxygen that we need to use. So we're going to blow onto the nest until it manages to catch. Once it catches, I'll then place it inside of uh, the fire, which will be in the fireplace, along with some larger fuel so that then I can have a nice warm fire for the rest of the day. A moment ago you saw me using char cloth as a small source of fuel for starting a fire using both flint and steel. And char cloth is something that you have to create yourself. So what we do here at the Historic Daniel Boone Home is we use 100% cotton. Uh, in this case it is blue jeans. We cut up old jeans and it does have to be 100% cotton and we place them, once they've been cut into uh, a small square, we place them inside of a tin that we have put a hole in the top of. So what we're doing when we do that is placing several pieces in, popping the top on, and then putting the tin into the fire. 
When it is in the fire, you're going to have a flame that shoots out the top as the gas is released inside, and it may even shoot out from the sides of the tin. Now, we wait for the flame to extinguish, and meanwhile, the pieces of blue jeans that are inside are going through pyrolysis, which is a transformation uh, where it creates char. It does not burn them up, but instead it blackens the cloth and makes it so it's very fragile and can tear easily, but it is also uh, something that can grab hold of that spark very easily so that you can transport it to a larger piece of fuel such as the rope that then goes to the wood shavings, that goes to the smaller pieces of kindling, and then getting up to our large logs to have our large fire. So again, the process is called pyrolysis, and it happens inside of a tin, which we carefully put into the fire and out of the fire using tongs, and uh, that is what we keep dry, is the pieces of char cloth, and keep it with us so that we can then have our fire starting.